Arsenal won the season has been explained by Wayne Rooney. And guess what? He's saying that Arsenal have surpassed everyone's ex- expectations. Now, if at all you are an Arsenal fan and you've gone ahead to feel like it's over for the end of the season, Arsenal have achieved nothing. <clears throat> This is another huge story that's going to show you how much Arsenal gonna, has gone ahead to achieve into this season. And I know some Arsenal fans are still hopeful and some are not hopeful. And I'm asking myself, why is it that Rokan David, a fan of Manchester United, is still hopeful that Arsenal can go away and shock City by really getting three points from Etihad? And Arsenal fans are really out of steam. You know, you are gassed out. What's wrong with you? This is your team. And when Nuna is going ahead to give you <clears throat> the explanation as to why Arsenal is going ahead to surpass everyone's expectations. Smash the like button, comment and share. If at all you're watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on the stories that we do upload in here on a daily. We are talking a little bit about Fabio Vieira, Mikel Teta, and your Obi who scored against you. That is Tio Walcott that saw Arsenal go two goals down. <clears throat> around the 25th minute of the game and he made it to nil at Emirates. Smash the like button, comment and share. It's a Sunday. Hope you guys are really going to charge. Those that are really going to charge, those that pray, pray from home, it's okay because we all believe that Lord God is everywhere. He's omniscious and obviously we can pray from anywhere and God will always hear our voices provided we play, provided we pray through the name of Jesus Christ. Now, today, <clears throat> I landed on this story. Yesterday, I'm sorry, I just did one story and I said, all right, let me come in through and obviously do a marathon of stories today. And today, guys, we are going to be having a marathon of those stories. Now, <clears throat> Wayne Rooney has gone ahead and really says, said that Arsenal have surpassed everyone's expectations to get themselves into a position where if they win their remaining six matches, they'll be champions. But drawing their past three games is a serious blow. Recently, I heard Gary Neville say that if at the start of the season you offered Arsenal the scenario of win one game at City and you'd be favourites to win the league, they would have taken it. But I think because of what has happened in the past few games, it won't feel like that. If they're not champions, they feel like they've thrown the title away. <clears throat> That's what when we was gonna hate to say. Now let's dissect this this whole tweet bit by bit. The first bit we are dissecting is Arsenal have surpassed everyone's expectations to get themselves into a position. If they had, sorry, if they win their remaining six matches, they'll be champions. You know, that's what he's saying. That Arsenal have gone ahead to really perform beyond their expectations. And he's right. He's right. To me, all I said was that Arsenal was going to hit 90 points. And when we say, Rokani, Arsenal might crumble. They might not hit 90 points. We all know that. They are left with <coughs> they are left with six games. With those six games are equivalent to how many points? They're equivalent to to eighteen points. So they only need to win fifteen to really equal the ninety point mark I really gave them. But I think I'm I'm not far away from my prediction because I gave it on the Kosi Arsenal podcast and even the Arsenal fans, Kosi and uh Glenn from Kenya never saw it coming. Never saw it coming. Though for my prediction of Arsenal to win the trophy was 2023-2024. That was my prediction that in the season of 2023-2024, Arsenal might win the trophy. All 24-2025. But I was also surprised that Arsenal have gone ahead to put in such performances. Now he's hitting about <coughs> Arsenal surpassing everyone's expectations. That is right. Do you have any doubt about what Wayne Rooney is saying? Because however much Arsenal had a, had a very good starting eleven. We knew that they needed a squad to win the league to win the league. But with their thin squad they've been having, they've managed to really tussle it what Man City until the final bend of the season. Still till till the end of the season, that's when you're going to see who is the winner of this trophy. And with six games left, Arsenal is still pushing Man City hard. And it's really a David versus Goliath situation. That's it. Man City is a Goliath. Arsenal is a David because Arsenal is not having the quality of players that Man City are really having. If at all you are going to do what we call a combined 11 on Monday or Tuesday, you are going to see this. You know, Alson Baker, not Alson Baker, Ederson versus Ramsdale, Ben White versus uh, Kyle Walker, Zinchenko versus Nathan Ake, you know, Ruben Diaz versus William Saliba, uh, Ekanji versus Gabriel Magales. 
Rodri versus Thomas Partey, you know Odegaard versus Kevin De Bruyne, mm-hmm. Riyad Mahrez versus Bukayo Saka, um, Gabriel Jesus versus Haaland, Martinelli versus Jack Grealish. I think when you look at those players of Man City, the experience they're having is really immense, but Arsenal have gone ahead to give them a game and they are pushing hard to a level that the winner takes it all on Wednesday. If Arsenal beats Man City, trust me City, the trophy will be done. I think that will be a very big wake-up call to Arsenal, knowing that God has given us a second chance to find ourselves in a position of really going past a team known as City. Arsenal knows it very well and they'll do that. So to me, I think Wayne Rooney is right to say to it that Arsenal have surpassed expectations for everyone. Now, he said, but drawing their past three games is a serious blow. Obviously, that is no doubt. That is no doubt. The only draw I accepted for Arsenal was that of Liverpool, and I saw very many Arsenal fans not taking it. But I told you, if you take a point from Anfield, you know, that is really great. Because Man City, that you're competing with, dropped three points there, meaning that at least you've aged Man City in that in that uh, galaxy. So, all what Arsenal needed was not to lose to West Ham, sorry, not draw to West Ham, and not draw with Southampton. If Arsenal collected maximum points from the previous two games, all would have been rosy. Arsenal would have gone to Etihad knowing that they are really having 79 points, you know, Man City at 70 points. They would have been nine points clear ahead of Man City. That is Arsenal for you. So to me, I think for that, Wayne Rooney was right. Then he said recently, I had Gary never say that if at the end of the season, you offered Arsenal the scenario of win the game of City and you'll be favourites to win the league, they will take it. But I think because of what happened in the past games, it won't feel like that. If they are not champions, they f- they'll feel like they've thrown the trophy away. And he's right. If Arsenal don't lift this trophy, they would have really thrown it away by themselves. It would have gone ahead to slip out of their hands because of the dynamics that really happened in the final bend of the season. <clears throat> After losing to City, Arsenal went ahead to stretch, to stretch to seven straight wins. That's it. After stretching to seven straight wins, guess what is happening at Arsenal right now? Their last three games, they've gone ahead to draw the meaning that, meaning that in the last 10 games, Arsenal haven't lost any game. But it doesn't add up. It doesn't add up to where you want it to be if at all you've not gone ahead to collect, to collect, to collect six points from the games of West Ham and Southampton. That is where Arsenal gets out of the equation and even Gabriel Jesus after the game of Southampton came out and said, now Arsenal have to go all out and get a result that is really a W at Etihad. If it's not a W for Arsenal, it's done and dusted, I think. Man City will put in another gear and I think that gear will see Man City really winning most of its games that is remaining to see it that really win the league. So guys, we look at how things are really happening. I think the trophy is not yet done. To me, I'm giving out the trophy on Wednesday. If Arsenal win against Man City, they win the trophy. If Man City win against Arsenal, they give, they really take the trophy. But if at all it's a draw, it won't be a done business. Because if at all Man City win their two games they have in hand, they'll be just one point ahead of Arsenal, you know? And obviously, you cannot cross the bridge before you reach it. <laughs> That's it. So, it comes to my understanding that the trophy is not yet done. That's it. Though very many Arsenal have gone ahead to surrender fans, but I think it's not yet done. It's still up for grabs for Arsenal and Man City. That's it. Then, Theo Walcott has gone ahead and said, Arsenal are just incredible. We played Man City the other week, and I thought Arsenal were way better than them. That's how I see Arsenal at the moment. We can take a lot of positives from this game because Arsenal are the best team in the league at the moment. Now, him talking about Arsenal being incredible is really great. And Man City going out Southampton beating them by <coughs> four goals to one. Well, I think it was three goals to one. It doesn't demean how good Arsenal has been this season. Because one will say, Man City beat Southampton away by three goals to one. Arsenal drew 3-3 three, three with, C- with Southampton at Emirates. I think the difference is simple. Man City never gave away careless goals and Arsenal went ahead to give away three careless goals. That's the only difference, you know? And that all goes goes back to Arsenal not having backup players to come in through and do the job for the club of Arsenal. 
into the remaining part of the season. You know, Mikel Arteta made a very good a very good guess when he went in through and brought Kivio because he knew that he was lacking a player to come in through and fit the boots of Gabriel Magales. But look at what has happened. Instead of really getting an injury from a right sorry from a left-footed center back, he has found himself tussling it out with a Saliba injury who plays on the right side of the central back or central defense, meaning that maybe would have gone ahead to sign a defender who plays with a right foot because a player who plays with the right foot can easily play on the right or left respectively well. But all that was a miscalculation because I think he knew that. Sorry, all that was not a miscalculation because he knew that he was having uh, Tomiyasu to come up and really act as a backup. You know, because Tomiyasu can play as a central defender and Tomiyasu can play as a right back. And I think if Tomiyasu never got an injury and Saliba found himself injured, it would have been easy for Ben White to come in and play as a right to play to play as a right footed central defender alongside Gabriel Magalhães. I think that was the calculation of Mikela Tata, but <clears throat> may him befell Arsenal and they saw William Saliba and Tomiyasu get injured with Cedric Soares loaned away to Fulham, I think that was going to hate to cost them a lot because we waited to see how Arsenal is going to crumble without Jesus they didn't, without Pate they didn't. But guess what? Without William Saliba, they've going to hate to crumble. They've going to hate to crumble. But I think, as I've always told you, Arsenal, Arsenal is scoring goals. Their problem is simple. They are letting in so many goals. So I think Walcott, is not lying. Arsenal is an incredible team, but they gifted away three goals. If Arsenal can go at hard and really find means of really closing the gap, of not really conceding goals, I think they win the game. They win the game against City. That's it. Because it's no brainer that Arsenal is going to score against Man City. They'll go past them. They'll go past their defense and they'll put those balls at the back of the net. I know even City is going to come in this game with a lot of pressure. That's it. And even Arsenal is going to come in here with a little bit of pressure drop because most people have, have written it off. And I think it's high time Arsenal showed people that we can raise back to the occasion. And it might be, we might be in for shocker on Wednesday, you know. However much it's hard to come out and say that Arsenal might go ahead and really lift this trophy. Sorry, win against Man City. But there are many more chances that can see Arsenal really lift the trophy. But they need to be on their A game. You know, they don't need to drop. They don't need to drop because Riyad Mahrez is back in the form of his life. Yesterday at um, at Wembley, he scored a hat trick. So, Arsenal need to find <clears throat> to find good moves to really put City to bed. But even even Bukayo Saka, one of the decision the decision one of the best players of Arsenal this season had been off for three games consecutively. But this time round against Southampton, he put up an assist and really created... Sorry, he put up an assist and scored one goal. So that means as Riyad Mahar is firing in up, even Bukayo Saka is getting himself in the best form of his life to prepare for the biggest game of the season that Pep Guardiola is going to hate to refer to as a finale. Then, Fabio, Fabio Vieira really had a very bad game against Southampton, but Mikel Arteta has gone ahead and really defended him. He has said it was a difficult match for a lot of players. But for Fabio, he hasn't played enough minutes. He had good periods, <clears throat> but the way the game starts as well, instead of going one or two nil up and everything goes in your favor, it starts to go in a much more difficult way. That doesn't help. So to me, I think, but who is responsible for not giving him enough minutes? It's Mikel Arteta. And this is one of the things that I think, I agree with most Arsenal fans of how Mikel Arteta picks his team. <clears throat> In the game of Liverpool, <laughs> if I was Mikel Arteta, I would have gone with the double pivot of Thomas Partey and Jorginho. Then Odegaard to play ahead of them and I get Grant Xhaka on the bench. Even the game of Man City, I wouldn't go Grant Xhaka, Thomas Partey, Odegaard. I would go Jorginho, Thomas Partey and Odegaard. You know, to be having a two block, a two blocking midfield. That's it. That will help Arsenal surpass loads of attacks of Man City. And obviously, with the Eugenio's passing range and Thomas Partey's energy driving forward, I think those two can orchestrate out something. One can play as a number six and one can play as a number eight, you know? 
or maybe you can leave the work of really creating to a player like Martin Odegaard because Odegaard will have all the luxury to do whatever he wants on the ball because you'll be knowing that behind me there are two blocking CDMs and I think that's what Mikel Ateta needs to do. He needs to really twist a little bit of his system but every time you see the same system you see the same number of players though the game of Southampton he really shocked me when he went for the game and switched to a 3-5-2 when he brought in or when he brought in Nketiah, Trossard, you know, and Rhys Nelson. He went for the game, yo. Know? And I think he would have gone ahead to do that at West Ham because he knew that he needed those three points. So, guys, thank you very much for watching in through Rock and David remains my name. I sign out for now. See you later. Your reaction to Arsenal surpassing expectations of many are welcome in the comment section below. What are your thoughts about Walcott on Arsenal? And lastly, Mikel Ateta defending Fabio Vieira. All your thoughts will be welcome in the comment section below. I sign out for now. I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Me out, my mate.